Hello everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Now today I've got a review of this loco, which I'll talk about in just a sec. But before I get on with that, I just want to say something about the camera. Um, now I've had this camera for about ooh, five years and over that time it's done literally thousands of hours worth of filming for me. Um, and it's been an excellent camera, um, I really wouldn't change anything about it. Other than the fact that recently I've noticed um, it's been having some real focus issues uh, on some of the videos um, that I've been filming. Now it's not immediately obvious on the viewfinder of the camera, uh, but when I get through to editing it, I notice that the images are a little bit soft occasionally. And I don't know what it is, um, it's more than likely just um, you know wear and tear. It's done lots and lots of hours of work, as I said, um, and I think it's probably just gotten to the point where it needs replacing. Uh, now I'm going to keep the camera obviously because it's a great camera, uh, but I have ordered a new uh, camera, um, one that I'm hoping is going to be far superior to this one uh, in terms of quality and focus and whatnot. Um, you know, because I want to try and get the best quality possible. Um, so that's coming next week, no point talking any more about it now um, because it isn't here yet and it's probably going to make a bit more sense if I do a video on the camera um, when I've got it. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. Uh, but yeah, this um, this is the um, High Flyer, um, the Warship Class Loco. And as you can see by the label on the lid, it's a Type 4 Bobo Diesel Hydraulic Locomotive uh, in BR Green. And the catalogue number there, I believe, is just Mainline's catalogue number. If you've seen the channel quite a bit recently, you'll have seen this Loco not too long ago um, in the Diesels in the Garden series. And after that episode went out, quite a lot of people said they liked this loco, and uh, so do I, to be honest. Um, it's a very pretty little loco. Um, you'll know I'm more of a steam lover, really. Um, but, you know, I thought, well, I don't think I've done a review of this, at least not properly. Um, so I thought today I'd do an unboxing of it, get her out, and get her running. Now, a lot of you noticed on that other video that she's a bit uh, rough when she runs. Uh, and that's still the case now. I have stripped her down and cleaned her and serviced her and oiled her and whatnot. Um, so hopefully she'll be a bit better today. Um, but just a, a forewarning uh, that she's not the smoothest loco. And you do have to be a bit rough with her uh, on the controller um, to make her do what you want her to do without stalling. But anyway, enough chit chat. Apologies for that. Um, let's get her out of the box. And well, we'll do the usual close look. Now this box is always very tight. <laughs> I've always remembered this box being difficult to get out. Look, everything's only just the right size. The loco is pressed right up against um, the film. But yeah, there she is. And on the side there, you've got D824. I suppose that would be the running number. I don't know much about steam, but I certainly don't know much about diesel, so you'll have to forgive me on that. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Bobo Loco. <laughs> it sounds funny to say. Right, let's get her out. She's not too light actually when you hold her. Um, this is a mainline one, so many of you will know mainline is um, an older version of Backman really. Uh, most Backman locos are, you know, originate from the old mainline locos uh, since I believe the company was bought by Backman. Uh, but yeah, I won't look at her in my hands like this. I'll get her out onto the uh, onto the white card um, because I think you can see it better. And if the camera plays ball, which I'm hoping it has done up to now, um, we'll be able to see it nicely um, in some good detail. Right, I'll do that. Right, so there she is, everybody. Um, and any performance issues aside, um, you'll have to agree that she is an absolutely beautiful piece of kit. Um, and it makes me think, you know, if this one does ever give up the ghost, I would love to try and get a modern one from, say, Backman or Hornby. And uh, just to see um, what they've done with these lovely locos, um, you know, 20 years on from when this one was made. But I'm not going to dwell on that because, as I say, this one is a very nice example. And it's really quite detailed as well um, for the age. I don't know exactly how old it is, uh, but it's got to be at least 15 to 20 years old, um, at the very least. Possibly more. Um, but yes, um, the roof detail um, is probably the most noticeable section. Um, there's rivets everywhere. You've got some quite finely detailed um, sections on there. Um, I don't know exactly what some of these parts are, which is probably quite bad. Um, but you've got all sorts of different uh, textures going on there, which is great. Um, the loco itself, um, you know, down the sides of the body, 
um, has got lots of different grills on it and that. There's not a lot of rivets there, but you know, based on the number of rivets on the roof, it's probably how they were in real life. Um, so it's not a complaint. It's more of a, a you know a remark on the realism. Um, the cabs on either end um, came with drivers in them. Now, when I bought it, it had the drivers in them. Um, I can't tell you whether it comes with them, um, you know, in the box or not. Um, if it's like Hornby, they perhaps came in a little bag and you could put them in if you choose to. Um, but my example came with them already sitting in there. Although they weren't glued in, so, you know, it's more likely that they were added in by the previous owner. Having said that, there's a fair bit of detail within the cab. Um, not a great deal, um, but, you know, enough to make it look quite realistic when it's running round. I wouldn't want to forget all the various um, printed details. Um, for example, you've got the warning signs next to the doors, um, which are a well, which to me look like lightning bolts, so, you know, electrical safety, things like that. Um, of course, the actual High Flyer nameplate with the BR logo above it um, is very tiny. I'm not sure if it comes across as that tiny, um, but I can assure you it's pretty darn small and it's very finely printed. Um, you know, it is readable, or it says Warship Class underneath High Flyer. Again, I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. Um, especially since it's been misbehaving recently, um, but it's certainly impressive. Uh, underneath there, um, there's a little black sort of badge. I have, I know right now that my eyes won't be able to pick that up. It's really small, uh, but we'll, again, we'll see what the camera can do. Um, we might be able to pick it up. Um, and you've got things like steps and little things like that, which just to help to bring it to life a little bit. The front is also pretty cool as well, and you'll see this better when we get her running, but she's actually got two bulbs at either end with diodes, um, which mean that they're directional. Um, they're not LEDs, they are actual bulbs, so you do need separate diodes in there. But yes, they light up, so the little IA30 on the front and back, I think, um, they do light up, which makes the loco quite unique, I suppose. It makes it look very uh, cool, let's say, when she's running around. Now you'll notice um, there is a coupling missing on the front or the back, whichever you choose. Uh, and I'm really upset about that because this is the only loco that I've actually damaged myself. Uh, I can't remember now how I did it. Um, this was back when I got her, uh, but I must have been doing something. Perhaps I was taking her apart, I don't know. Uh, but the coupling did break. Um, but luckily it doesn't matter because there's one on the other end and, you know, we can push or pull with it. So it's not a big, uh, big deal, but yeah, unfortunately that did happen. But never mind, never mind. And the buffer bars are quite nice as well, above the couplings. Um, no sprung buffers or anything like that, but most older locos don't feature that anyway. But you have got plenty of rivets surrounding the buffer bar, as well as uh, a chain coupling hook, um, which I suppose you could use if you wanted to. Uh, also the bogies, there's quite a bit of detail uh, between the wheels, um, you know, on the bogies, on the chassis of the bogies. Uh, and they are actually removable plastic um, that comes off with the uh, you know the undercarriage. It all comes off. So for servicing and all that, you can get those off nicely. Uh, and after doing so, you can get the wheels off quite easily as well. Um, which means that it's not a bad loco to service, um, but it can take quite a while to get all the various screws out and you know pop the bogies out of the main chassis. It's a bit of a faff servicing wise, um, but uh, you know you really do need to do it with this one, uh, well with mine anyway because it doesn't run too great, as I've been saying. Right, well I think we've had a good look at her now. Um, I think the only thing left to do is hook her up to some coaches. Not too many mine, because as I say, her performance uh, isn't great. But you know, maybe three coaches will do it, and uh, we'll get her running, probably with another diesel. I'll see what I can do. And uh, yeah, we'll have a bit of a diesel day, and a little bit of a running session. Right, see you in a minute. Okay, well she's sitting on the line now and she's hooked up to a set of three Lima coaches. Um, I don't really use these coaches very much because they've got odd couplings on them. Um, but uh, yes, uh, they're not particularly nice, but uh, yep, yeah, they're certainly uh, modern coaches. So uh, yep, yeah, I thought I'd give those a go. Right, let's get her running. Before I do though, I've also got an Intercity uh, set, a four piece set, um, in the Swallow livery uh, running on the other rail, so hopefully that will make things a lot more interesting as well. But for now, let's give this a try. There we go, a bit rough, not too bad. And the Intercity of course, which runs very well. There she goes, and we'll give it all a look on the layout.
Alright, well that should about do it for today everybody. Thank you very much for watching. As you can see, the old uh, warship is a lot smoother now, um, having had a good old run. And I suppose it does a good really, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, I think that is just about all I've got to show you. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you liked the video, please go and check out uh, my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash samstrains. Otherwise, please like and subscribe, um, because that really helps the channel out. And it's quite a motivation um, to make lots more videos. Though for now, I'll just say thank you very much for watching. And I will catch you very soon, hopefully on Sunday, um, with another episode of Diesels in the Garden. Um, so, yep, another Diesels video, um, so hopefully any Diesel fans out there, um, I've catered for you a little bit this time. Uh, and if you're a Steam lover like me, well, hopefully it's just a bit of something different. And we'll be back to Steam, probably, I can't promise, um, but probably back to Steam next time. Um, so, yep, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Cheers, everybody.